Hello, everyone. I am Lucia, Coordinator of Custom, Digiday's Creative Content Agency, and I will be your moderator today. Thank you for joining us in today's webinar, Driving Disruption from the Inside Out, How Data Holds the Key to Revenue and Better Performance, presented by our partner, CRM. CRM is a group of digital performance experts accelerating growth and driving operational efficiencies for organizations across the digital ecosystem. Through a full suite of advisory, operational, and technical solutions, CRM helps organizers, organizations unlock new sources of value, allowing clients to maximize returns from digital channels much faster and at scale. I would like to introduce our wonderful presenter, Dominic Finney. He is the Vice President of Strategy at Theorem. Dominic has over 18 years of digital experience gained from a range of technology and agency roles. He began his career in product marketing at Netscape at a challenging time when the company was battling MSN for a share of the internet browser market. Before founding FAR Partners, Dominic spent five years at Quantum Media. There, he was part of the management team which developed Quantum Media into leading independent digital media agency, subsequently acquired by Havas. He has also held management roles at Starcom, MediaVest, and MediaVest. A question and answer period will follow the presentation, so please stay with us until the end. Feel free to submit questions at any time via the GoToWebinar platform. Everyone who registered today's webinar will receive an email with a recording of the session tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And finally, if you're live tweeting along with us today, use the hashtag ActionableData. Okay, let's get started. Dominic, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, firstly, many thanks uh, for sparing the time to listen to this presentation, which is focused on data and how we can drive revenue and performance for it. So data really is the fuel that drives all marketing, and as such, you need the best in market approach to data management. However, it's not enough just to have systems and processes. It's also a people-driven exercise, so you have to combine the best of your tech with the people that you use. And for us, it all comes down to an approach, and that approach needs to have a clear framework and be integrated. Because when you're managing data, there's a number of tasks that you need to do, the systems that you need to manage, and you need to understand the value of that. And if you don't have a clearly outlined approach, you will never get the true value. What we have done at Theorem is we've established a uniquely modern approach to this, which we call the four A's, uh, which enables us to deliver an end-to-end -end solution for managing and extracting value from your data. I will go through that framework towards the end of this presentation, where I'll also give examples of how we solve clients' issues and uh, challenges through that framework. In between that, I will also look at what are the key challenges and opportunities with data, because data is as much a challenge as an opportunity. When we look at the scale and the complexity of data out there, we really need to understand and address those issues so we can realize the value of the other side. Uh, I will also look at what are, the, what are the attributes of the market values for data. So for media execs, what are they looking for and what do they see as the key value? And also from the buy side of agencies, what do they see as the demand? What are they looking for? within that because our belief is also that you need to be experts in the marketplace that you work in with regards to data and it's only when you understand the value of the data in the marketplace you work in that you can extract that. Um, so I'll briefly uh, uh, I'll briefly go for an introduction of my myself. Um, bear with me. Sorry, uh, so uh, thanks to Digiday for giving me a, a top line introduction. Uh, my background is as a digital strategist in the media world. As uh, Digiday said, I've worked at, on both the tech side of places like Netscape and also in big agencies such as Publicis. And the thing with all of these agencies that was key is that they used data and app analytics to drive value for their clients and their organizations. So I've spent a whole career looking at the value of data and using technology to extract value from that. Uh, and alongside me, I also have Rakesh, who is our technical lead at Theorem, whose job it is is to de uh, develop and manage technology solutions within our organization and deliver those to clients. So if you have any technical questions, he'll be able to address those. And before we go into the meat of the presentation, I'd just like to remind everyone that the hashtag is hashtag actionable data for the Twitter conversation. 
And then with regards to Theorem, uh, as um, Digiday pointed out, we're a, we're a business to business service provider. So essentially, we develop integrated solutions for our clients, which begins with advisory services. So we advise them on what's the best use uh, and models that their business should take forward. So with regards to this uh, area we're looking at now, we would advise them how to use data, how to extract value from data. Then the next part of our integrated services where we provide operational services and implementational support. So as an example, we would uh, implement tools to help you manage your data and deliver insights from that data. As a company, we're also focused on the media sector because it is our belief that you need to have real expertise in whichever area you're managing data. Uh, and then what I'd like to do is just go through through to the next section, which is the, the data challenge and opportunity. So for us, data is a double-sided coin. It's as much a challenge as an opportunity. So what do we mean by a challenge? Well, for example, the scale of data in, in the marketplace, you need robust systems to manage that. Also, the sheer diversity of the data, you need to understand which data you're dealing with. And it's only when you can do those can you really extract value. And if you don't do that properly, it can be as damaged to an organization as it is an opportunity to create value. So this is the model that we've developed. So essentially, on the left-hand side, you see the two fundamental challenges. First is the scale of data. And to give you a sense of that scale, Every two days, we create now as much data as we did up until 2003. And so just think about the amount of data that's flowing through the marketplace, the amount of data that you can access to uh, manage your organization. And then the second thing is the fragmentation of that data. So when we work with clients, we're often dealing with lots of different data sources. So first party data, second and third party data, we're also managing that data across platforms and through to offline and legacy systems. And unless you have a clear approach to managing that, you're not going to extract the value you need to. And the opportunities that we see are on the integration side. So the great uh, thing about the market and the technology we work in now is that there are many tools to help you manage and integrate uh, that technology, that, that data, essentially. And the second thing is the evolution of analytics tools. So the ability to create insights and visually represent data has evolved significantly. And our view is that to capture all of these four things together, it's a combination of great use of technology combined with having the right people. And effectively, that's about talent, having the people that understand this marketplace and using the technology in the correct way. So this slide is essentially uh, research on the market that establishes how, how big these challenges are that we've talked about, essentially. So uh, this is a media, be media execs feedback. And if you look, 40% of uh, the market is challenged by the sheer volume of data. So four in every 10 executives out there are struggling with the volume of data and the disparate nature of it. And then over half the market is looking to manage that data with 10 different tool sets. So again, this is where integration becomes really important because if you're using lots of different tools and have lots of different data sources, you really need to be able to integrate that. And that's why you're seeing here 30% of people would prefer to have an integrated solution. And it's my belief that that will go up as people realize the challenges around these things. And then finally, that, that uh, fourth point that we talked about is, is it's absolutely key to be able to analyze that data. So it's not just enough to be able to access and manage the data. If you don't have the right analytics tools to man manage that, you're not going to extract the value you're looking for from the data. And we also believe uh, that technology alone isn't the answer. What you need to do is you need to take a long, hard look at the models that you build and the strategies. And that begins with the right framework approach. And what we mean by that is understanding at the very beginning, what are your business goals and what is the use for data that you need to get out of it? So even before you audit your systems and look at the data, what is the value that you're looking to extract from it? What are the commercial and business actions that you need to achieve? Once you understand that, you can then start to work on the delivery of that. The second thing we believe is that talent is, is absolutely key in having the right specialists. So for example, at Theorem, we have a combination 
of, of technical people. We also have data scientists within the organization and strategists. And when you put the technical strategist and the team together, that's when you get optimal results uh, within that. And then the, the, the final area that's really, really important because the market is changing so much, the technology is evolving and the volumes and complexity of data is growing exponentially is you need to have an agile and a flexible approach to the market. So you need to see how data is changing uh, and how the technology is evolving and adapt what you do in response to that. And that uh, approach should work in both uh, a small organization and, and a big organization. And the two things that we think really, really drive that are having the right values and the right culture. So the right values is essentially about saying, we're going to build an agile culture here. We're going to invest in uh, technology. And that we're actually going to promote the importance of data and this framework within the organization and build out from there. So in this section, we're going to look at what the value of the data is. It's really important to understand what the role and the value of the data is in the marketplace you, you work in is. Because no one, two pieces of data are the same, essentially. And you need to understand, if you're working in the media marketplaces, what, what is the value of audience data? What is the value of performance data? How does that play out in, in my marketplace? And what we're going to do is look here at what both uh, media execs and buyers in this market uh, see as the important values to data. So the first uh, slide we were showing here is a report that has uh, feedback from senior media execs in the marketplace. And what it's asking them is, is what they hope to achieve for their organization. So if you look at the first one, the, the most important thing they hope to achieve is growth in revenue. And then if you look at the gray on the right hand side of that, it shows at what percentage of these organizations have achieved that. So you can see again a big gap with the people hoping to achieve and the people who are actually achieving it. And it's not so surprising that revenue is, is an important driver. Every business is looking for revenue within this. Uh, if you look at the, the next set of ones, this is about uh, targeting customers and audience profiles. And again, this is absolutely vital. The more you understand about your customers, the more you can derive value. And what's reassuring here is, is that actually media exec, media exec are doing a much better job of building out the right customer segments. And then we come uh, down to the second two, which are very much performance-driven ones. So this is about better measurement of business performance and deriving value from your yields in market. So there's about four in 10 media execs looking to do this. And there's uh, still a big gap in terms of achieving this from 33% to 25%. Uh, and finally, it's about learning about customers' needs and preferences within the organization. The other thing that I take from this slide that uh, I think is really important is, is just emphasize how important data is. Because what they're saying essentially is, is, I see data as the critical factor in growing revenue. I see data as the critical factor in understanding my customers and driving better performance. So essentially, if you can't manage and harness the power of your data, you're not going to be able to effectively grow revenue, build audiences, and drive performance. And so on to the second uh, way of looking at this. So what we've done here is we've got our own theorem panel. So we essentially have an agency panel we've built that represents uh, all of the key agencies in the US market. And what we use this for to do is to understand what, where, where, where is the demand in market? So what are the buyers looking for from suppliers, essentially? And what's quite reassuring here is you glance down the slide, which ranks them in terms of importance. So essentially, we ask the agencies, what is the value of media owners data by purpose out of 10? And you can see that audience targeting comes in very, very high, followed by campaign optimization, uh, both post and during the campaign and comms insights. And what's reassuring for me around that is, is that actually mirrors what exec thinks are important as well. So the top ones for them were around customer and audience segments. And again, here it's about segments. And then the second thing was about optimizing performance. And again, you see here it's about optimizing performance. Where it's interesting to see the differences are essentially for agencies, what they see as important is actually insights around the creation of content and creative development. 
that doesn't come out as significantly on, on the exec side of things. So I, there I see as an opportunity for people to look at uh, data and see how they can create value from it in terms of creativity and content. And then finally, we're looking at the challenges around integrating data. So this, from this feedback, what the market is talking about is saying that we have lots of data in different places, but what we're not able to do is integrate that and put that together effectively. And the key learning here is it goes back to what we're saying, which is you need a framework approach to manage all of those different data sets and put them into an integrated model. model. Uh, so now we're coming through to the planning your data framework here. And it's absolutely vital that you have an established approach and framework for managing the data. At Theorem, we have a uniquely modern approach to this that contains the classic approaches of data with the power of new systems and the scale of, of data. So what we do is we look at uh, the processes that you need to do, the data you have, and then we build out a model for that. And we essentially look at this as an end-to-end -end model. So we go from an initial audit to building out the systems, extracting the value through to activation of, of, that, of that data. And this is essentially the four A's model that I'm about to take you through. So there are four clear and critical stages to the four A's model. The first is assessment. So before you give, begin anything, you need to understand what are the KPIs that you are looking to achieve and what are essentially are the business outcomes. Once you understand those, you can then start to build out your approach. When you do that, you then start to do the assessment of, of your approach and then look to optimize it, essentially. Then you go to the automation. So that's essentially using technologies and systems to automate the uh, collection of data, the integration of data, the mapping and the insights that you derive from the data. So that's the key bit in using technology to help you get value. Then we move on to what we call addressing, and that is essentially where you harvest all the good work you've done before. So this is where you've got the right data in there and you've used the right systems to do it, and you build out the uh, dashboard reports, the base of visualizations and the models to create the insights that you need to drive your business forward. So it, it, within Theorem, that's where we use our data scientists and our advanced analytics team to build out the models and the actions. And essentially you end with the uh, activation. And this is where you're actually taking those insights and implementing change within your organization. And the key point here is, is to have an process that implements change. It's not enough to get great data insights. If you don't have a clear process for saying, when we, are, when we realize there's business challenges, these are the steps we're gonna to take to make those changes. Your, value, your data doesn't have value. Or if you don't have a system that says, when we understand who the optimum audience segments are that can drive performance, if you don't have the system and process in place to activate those, you're never going to realize the value of the data or the process you've built. And so what essentially we have here is a framework approach to managing, delivering, and extracting value for your data. And so with the first step, uh, what I'm going through here is, is what we do as an organization. So one of the key things that we look at is user cases. So what we mean by user cases are, what are the classic reports and insights that you're going to build for your data? And I'll take you through some examples in, in the next slide. But it's really important to understand is, is the role of data for me about driving revenue? Is it about uh, marketing to my customers? Is it about improving campaign performance? Once you understand those, you can then start to build out your strategy from there. Within that, you also need the key performance indicators. So am, am I looking at ROI, return on investment, or am I looking at click-through rates here, or am I looking at volume? Once you've got those two things established, you can start to build out from there. At Theorem, then, what we do when we work with clients is, is that we audit the whole approach. We will assess uh, your approach to data management, to systems and the processes, to establish, do you have the right systems in process? Do you have the right government policies and practices and process? 
Uh, and then what we will start to do is build out an approach. So we will establish what is the optimal approach for you as an organization? Do you have the right people in place? Do you have the right technology in combination to deliver that? And once you've mapped that out, you can move to the next stage essentially. But before we go to that next stage, I'd just like to take you through some examples of, of some user cases. So this is again, one's focused on the media sector. So if we start with the left, you have the classic campaign performance user case. So this is exact, essentially building out of the, all of those reports for mid-campaign performance, end of campaign performance, um, discrepancies reports, uh, pacing reports, mapping those out. So if those are the kinds of reports and insights you need, build those out. The, the second one, as an example, is, is yield management. So this is essentially looking at how can we improve the yield of, of, a, of our inventory. What are the triggers and the measures that we need to look to to drive that through? Then we look at the third one, which is page performance. So essentially, within, within the uh, page, what are the ads or what are the triggers that are driving the sale of ads or customers to respond in certain ways? So how do we analyze that? And then we go through to two other classic ones, which is revenue performance. So looking at revenue performance across your digital assets, what's driving revenue, where are the revenue weaknesses, and finally through to audience profiling. So essentially what audience segments are we looking to build and target against and monitor against? These are just examples of, of user cases. The way that we suggest that you build out your user cases is to do two key things. One is to look inwardly and understand what am I trying to do as a business and what do, does success look like for me? And once you understand those two things, you can start to build your user cases around that. The second thing is to look externally and go, what within my market are the classic reporting user cases that are being built? And then you can compare and see where you sit against the market. And once you put those two things together, you can build the right user cases. Then we go on to the second stage, which we call automation. So this is essentially where you start to integrate platforms and systems. So it, you will look to uh, use a system to pull in the data. So we recommend uh, leveraging APIs or their equivalent to extract the data, whether that be uh, where data is held in different areas of your organization and also external data. And at the end of the presentation, I'll take you for an example of where we do both internal and external data. The next stage that you need to do is then to uh, in, uh, conduct the appropriate field mapping. So that's making sure that you get data mapped and have the right naming conventions so when you come to reporting it, you understand it. And then finally, you look to then integrate and load that data in one central depository so at Theorem, we, we use uh, SAM as an automated tool to extract the data. And then we have Innovus Analytics, which is where we centrally hold the data and do our analytics. So we have two clear systems that are automated to pull in different sets of data and then manage it in one central area. And you need that, that approach and that technology to enable you to do that because you can then uh, deliver those uh, integrated reports and data visualizations that you require. Then we come on to the uh, third step, which is essentially you've built all the tools, you've got the data into the right place, and you know what your user cases are, so you now need to apply those. So this is when you've actually built out all of your reports. So if you go back to two previous slides when I talk about the yield or the revenue report, this is when you start to plug those in and then you start to build out models for those reports. So you may want to do some predictive analysis. Uh, and then essentially it's about just building out those, those reports and then analyzing to see if there are any discrepancies. Are the reports accurate? Are they delivering what they're supposed to? Are there any ways that you can improve them and develop new models to take them forward? And then we come to the final stage, which is activation. So essentially you get your um, advanced analytics team to then identify under and overperforming Initiative. So what's working well within those reports? What's performing and what's not performing? Uh, then you can start to look at site performance, campaign performance inventory, and then you begin to optimize that. So what bits do we need to change within that? 
And as I said before, the key is to establish a process for applying those insights actively within your business. So the insights team need to be working very closely with your commercial team so that you hand those insights to them so they can apply those changes. So I'm just going to uh, come to the end with uh, a couple of examples of how we've applied this four A's model to clients that we work with. So the first example that we have is a pan-regional newspaper. So this is uh, a nationwide news newspaper group that has multiple local uh, newspaper publications. And what this means is, is that they are handling data from lots of different regions. On top of that, because they're handling internal and external data, they have a significant volume of different data sources that they need to manage. And their challenge was is that their systems weren't capable of pulling and integrating that data together. The second challenge that they had was is that they needed to develop a vast number of reports, both at a local and national level. And they again, their systems weren't capable of doing that uh, rapidly enough to uh, deliver against the market's expectations. So the market was looking for these reports on a consistent basis, and they just didn't have that framework in place. So essentially what we did was is, through our team is we did that first bit that we talk about, which is the assessment. So we went in and assessed what they had. And very quickly, we established that there were two key challenges. One was that they didn't have a clear idea of the data that they needed to extract and what was important to deliver against client needs. And they didn't have an automated model for delivering this. So essentially what we did is we built uh, out a system using SAM, which is our tool for uh, essentially taking in data sources in an automated way and managing them in one central area. And we plug those into Innovas, which is our analytics tool, which we use to create dashboards. And this made a significant difference to their business. So they went from what was a very manual process to an automated process. So it uh, created significant resource savings because they didn't need to pay that manual side. It also created significant performance improvements because they could now quickly and easily develop the reports they needed to do. And because it was automated, the reports were much more accurate. The second benefit that that delivered was it, is it freed up time both on the client side and our side to actually look at analyzing the data. So rather than processing the data, you now spend your time working out what are those user cases and what are those KPIs that we need to do to deliver business so that the client essentially started to become much more strategic about the business. And the net result was is that uh, customer satisfaction increased significantly and the clients were, started, were able to start driving commercial performance for their business. And this uh, just shows the key stages to that. So the client cha challenge is where we do the assessment. The solution is where we use the addressed and automation uh, process and then we activate it. Uh, the second one was a different challenge. So this was a global broadcast. So essentially, they broadcast in a vast number of uh, countries across the world. And their, their challenge was twofold. One was is that they didn't understand the business metrics that they needed to drive their business forward. They couldn't see because the market changed so much. They didn't understand. Them. The second thing was is that they didn't know how they were performing against their competitors. They didn't have any external benchmarks to enable them to assess and measure their performance. So essentially what we did is, again, we assessed what the challenge was within their organization. And the solution we came back with for them was about using our external data so that we could benchmark them against their competitors and la layering that in with their internal data. And what we did was is we assessed and established what were the key metrics to drive this business forward. It was about sales conversions. It was about not just looking at a regional basis, but looking at a pan-regional basis uh, for these things. And the result was is that we were able to deliver what they needed was essentially a benchmark of how they're performing in market and a clear set of actions for them to improve performance against their competition. As a result of this, they implemented a new global programmatic strategy. So they shifted from a regional to a global programmatic strategy, which made them much more competitive in market. 
And again, it follows that process of assess, address, automate, and activate. So the key takeaways that I would say from this presentation are as the first one is that you need a corporate-wide approach to data. It needs to be important in your organization, and you need to have an agreed framework approach to delivering that that's well established. And if you don't have that, you're not going to extract value from your data. The second thing is, is it's not just about technology. Good use of data combines technology and people so that you have people with the right skills and expertise working and using the technology. And if you don't have those two key ingredients working together, you're not going to deliver the value uh, from that. And then finally, it's about having a well thought through approach to taking value from this data that is relevant to your market. And, and for us, working in the media market, we've established what we believe is an extremely strong approach with the four A's, which is designed specifically with the media market in place and leverages all of the technology available in market to deliver a holistic approach to data, and most importantly, is an end-to-end -end approach to data. So that we start with a very clear assessment and audit from, from that. We then use tools to automate that process, uh, within that and then you can go through to addressing what the insights are and activating and that's the end of the presentation so I'd just like to touch on ways that you can get in touch with us if you have any further questions so via email you can get in touch at marketing at net, and then you have Facebook, uh, Twitter and the phone contacts so I'd just like to move over to if you have any questions that you'd like to address. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dominic. Uh, those are some great insights, especially diving into you know those four A's. Uh, just a reminder for all you attendees, the full recording of the webinar will be made available to you in a follow-up email tomorrow. Uh, and now we will move on to the question and answer portion of the webinar. Uh, just a reminder, you can submit questions at any time through the GoToWebinar panel. Okay, Dominic, so the first question I have for you. How long does a typical 4A's engagement take? Uh, it's, it's subject uh, to, to, the, to each client, so depending on what their business model is, uh, how many data sources they're using, how well set up they are for data, and what they're looking to do. But if we take the user cases that we looked at in the presentation, so if we're looking to build out revenue reports, yield reports, uh, it's a typical engagement takes six to ten weeks for us to have an end-to-end -end solution up and running with reports and insights out the other end. Okay. Awesome. And, uh, you know, just to follow up with that, we have the question, why are user cases why are user cases so important? It, they're absolutely vital because and, and if you don't understand what it is is the value that you're looking to extract from that data to begin with, you're going to get lost in the data you have. So that you need to understand essentially what is it about this data that I'm trying to change within the organization? Am I trying to improve yield? Am I trying to drive revenue? Once you have that, you can then build out what is the reporting framework that I'm going to use for that? And then what that ensures is that the whole solution that you build off the back of that in terms of uh, the uh, technology that you use, the data that you extract, it will all be driven towards improved revenue, improved campaign performance. So it gives you the right metrics at the beginning. Awesome. And now the next question, what is the most common client challenge? Uh, the most common client, client challenge that, that we find in market is, is actually just about the approach. Client, clients are coming to us and they're saying, we know we've got great data, we don't know how to get to that data, and we don't know how to manage and extract value from it. So quite often the first thing we're doing is assessing what they do and developing an approach for them. The second challenge that clients have as well is they don't have the ability to manage the volume of data that they have. They tend to be doing it in quite a manual way and what they're looking for is a solution that can automate and integrate data because a lot of the clients we work with have 
lots of different data sources and what they need is those put into one central place in an automated way so they can quickly and accurately uh, deliver value and insight from that. So they're the two common ones, approach and delivering an automated and integrated solution. Approach and automate, got it. Okay, and the next question. We have data managed through third-party platforms, but we often find discrepancies between the different systems. How do we manage that? Uh, I'll hand, hand, hand over to Rikresh, who's our technical expert, because we look, we do a lot of uh, this kind of thing with pacing and discrepancy reports. Yeah, so uh, uh, this is Rakesh. So we extract the data from uh, the first party uh, servers and also the third party servers. And uh, we map uh, the line items uh, based on the first parties and the third parties and uh, we uh, give the discrepancies uh, and we show the uh, discrepancies in a dashboard so the dashboard will uh, help you to see the discrepancy across the first party and the third party and before the dashboard we does the mapping between the first party and third party line items and project in the dashboards so, so, so essentially i think that the key point that rakesh is is making is there's always discrepancies between different sets of data the first thing to do is to map that data well into one place. The second key thing to do is then to build integrated reports so that you can then start to spot those discrepancies and understand what the root causes are. Once you've got that, you can then go back to your providers and clearly and concisely start to work through those reasons. It may be counting methodologies, it may be a technology reason, but the first thing you need to do is to be able to look at the data sets side by side. And that's what, we, we do a tremendous amount of this uh, for, for discrepancy reports. So, especially to do with buying and selling where people are, are looking at different values. So it's truly crucial that you come to an agreed number. Awesome, thank you Rakesh for um, you know popping in there. Um, and another one that just came in, what percent of your data on average comes from social media for your clients? Uh, that, that, that's a, a great question. So it, it, it plays a real role in, in what we do. So we, we work with a lot of media organizations. So generally, the, the, the volume of social data will reflect the mix of that particular client. So um, if, if you're looking at media owners, they tend to use social a lot for, for growing audiences and audience extension. So it wouldn't be the most significant data volume we're looking for, but it would definitely uh, play a role within that. If, for example, we were managing data for, for agencies, then it would play a much higher role because things like uh, Facebook come into play. So it really does depend on the client to what that mix is, but it's definitely a, a key element of the data we look at. Absolutely. Uh, the next question we have is, most of your discussion is focused in the advertising space. Is it also useful in tracking metrics in the editorial space? Have you done this, and what are some of the KPIs? Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a great question. So our, our, our belief is, is that our model can be applied to um, the whole of the media sector. So um, essentially, the process of, of assessing, automating, activating, addressing, they, they, they all work whether you're looking at editorial or commercial data. What you need to do is apply that to your particular need. So in the example of an editorial, where that would change is in the first two steps of that process. So when I talked about user cases and I talked about KPIs, you would be looking for what are the right user cases and KPIs for you. So you might be looking for average uh, uh, user session or how many articles a user reads, or you might be looking at repeat visits. And so you establish your KPIs and then you build your user cases, which is your reports, essentially around that. So the model works, whichever way you look at it, but what you need to do is apply that to your, your business and your KPIs and what you need to achieve to do that. And yeah, we do do some uh, work in the editorial 
departments as well because we tend to work across the publisher organization a large chunk of it is advertising but we do do editorial work as well thank you for clarifying that uh, the next question is on the tech side if my company uses multiple data analytics sources for example Google Analytics Adobe Analytics and uh, even a custom solution each executed by different teams for different purposes. Uh, the question is, is, it, is there value in having metrics from all of them in your data bank or rather having an organization-wide decision um, to only use one system? Uh, that's <laughs> it's, it's a good question. It's, 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 it's a difficult question to answer because it, re it really does depend on the role of each of those data sources and what, what you're using them for. So essentially you are going to need to use partners to supply uh, data and some of them are going to have specific metrics. The, the one rule of thumb that we tend to follow is, is establish what your own metrics are first and they should be your overriding metrics. Then layer in metrics that are relevant from partners and that do add value. But the second rule of thumb for us is generally less is more, so you don't want too many different metrics floating around. You just want to be focused on the key ones. Rakesh, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't. no, no, that, that's it. I think that, that's, that's it on that. But that. That's a difficult question to ask because it really does depend on the individual organization and what those data suppliers' role is. Yes, I completely agree. Um, uh, Another question we have that just came in, what happens when a third-party system doesn't have an API? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. That's definitely one Rakesh would like to take because he deals with that a lot. Yeah, uh, so the platforms uh, which we don't have an uh, API, uh, we, uh, we have a tool called SAM that is called as a smart adapter for marketers. So uh, uh, it records uh, the browser session, like how the uh, how we download the data manually. The SAM tool acts like a robot, and it extracts the data. Even if there is no API, SAM can download the data through automation. So we run cell name uh, scripts, which uh, records all the browser sessions, and it uh, downloads the data. Yeah, and and, and the the other thing. There are a number of ways to extract the data. APIs is is the preferred one, but you can you can even scrape the data or use email. It's there are there are different solutions. We try to go with the, the ones that are the most accurate and efficient, and then work back from there. Thank you, thank you, Rakesh, again for popping in. Um, so do you have any recommendations on how we can begin breaking down our internal silos from an organizational standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think the first, two of the big things is, 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 is one is to demonstrate the value of data. Once you can establish what data can do for your organization, you then have a message to send out to the organization that says, this is good news for us. If we, as an organization, can work together, we can improve our revenue performance, our efficiency, which will make people's lives easier and more profitable. If you give uh, the company a vision and show that that vision is going to create value for everyone, that's something that people can rally behind. The second thing that I, I, I would say is, Everyone says change starts at the top, and that's absolutely key. You need to have buy-in from the top of the organization if you're going to do something uh, company-wide and on a big scale. The second thing that you need to do alongside that, though, is that's just the beginning. Then you need to map that change to every level and every department within that organization. So you need to understand what the role of each of those organizations is and get buy-in at each of those levels. So that, there's a lot of other things you can do, but they're two of the key ones that we find. Thank you. And um, could you give an example of how agencies can demonstrate the value of their data to advertisers? Um, yeah, I, I think essentially a lot of agencies are already demonstrating uh, the value of, of the data to advertisers. 
So I think one of the great values of an agency is, is that they manage a lot of different data sets. So they will be managing all of the different channels for a client. So that could be media channels, that can be marketing channels. All of those signals create really important learnings. And the only place you can effectively put all of those things together is within an agency. So the first thing I would say is that ag the agencies that are really good at integrating all of that data and then matching that to the key eight KPIs of the client are the ones that are going to show the biggest value. The second thing I would say is that you have to work closely and openly with, with, with your client as well because the second key set of data, especially for path to purchase clients, is, is the on-site client data. So agencies that are good at matching their data to a client's on-site data, and especially path to purchase, will also de demonstrate huge value because you're linking that to the performance uh, on the client side. They're, they're two of the big ones that, that we see. And I'm here. This one, I'm, I hope that you understand it, but it, it's have you seen an overall metric to look at your web usage rather than many different ones like page views, average user session, number of articles read, et cetera? Yeah, so um, if, I'll, I'll give you an example. So uh, for a publisher, you can look at a whole host of um, metrics, you know, some of the ones you just pointed out. But really, some of the publishers that are being most successful now are looking at ARPU as the key one. What's the average revenue we're driving per user? That, that is the final yardstick is how much does it cost us to get a user and how much revenue do we make off the back of them? Every other metric ladders up to into that if you're a publisher with a strong ad model. Okay, awesome. And um, if anyone else has any more questions, uh, this is, you know, we have a few more minutes. So please share those in the GoToWebinar app. But otherwise, um, you know, I think we've had an extremely productive Q&A here. And uh, we've had some great questions. And so this is your last chance, everyone, if you want to send in um, some questions. OK, and I, you know, if that's it, Dominic, Rakesh, thank you very much for being here today. and. Um, I just want to remind all of the attendees that you, you know, will get this recording. Check your inboxes tomorrow. Uh, thank you again to our partner, Serum, and all of you for joining us today. We hope you learned something. Um, yeah, thanks again, and please enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Many thanks to everyone for listening.